Welcome to my lecture online. So when are figures congruent? And what does the word congruent really mean? We're not used to use that word. It's kind of a foreign word. And unless you're working with geometry, you don't see it very often. But it does have a very specific meaning. It says that congruent means that they have the same measure. The sides have the same length and the angles have the same angular measure. Notice we don't use the word equal and that's what we're used to use, for example, in algebra. The left side equals the right side. That means they're identical. So why use congruent and not equal? Well, the difference is that when things are congruent, they don't have to have the same orientation. So they can be oriented differently and so therefore it may be more difficult to see if they have the same length or the same angular measure and once we establish that, we then say they're congruent because they're not oriented in the same way. Otherwise, we could potentially say they are equal. If they're oriented exactly the same way, that we can just kind of line them up and go, look, they're equal to one another. But congruent is the word that we use for that particular purpose. So here we can see that there's two triangles and obviously they're not oriented in the same way. But notice that with the sides, we put little lines through them. Here's one line, here's two little lines, there's three little lines and the same over here. And with angles, either we indicate that they're a right angle, a 90 degree angle, or we indicate it with a couple of curved little lines like that. Here, one line there and two lines there. Now, if we take a look at the two triangles, and we see that this angle has one little curved line on it, that this one has one little curved line on it, then that indicates that those two angles have the same measure. Same with these two angles. They have two little curved lines that would indicate that those two have the same measure. And here you can see that they're both right angles and by definition if they're both right angles with 90 degree angles then they have the same angular measure. Now when we look at the sides notice that this side has one little line through it so does this side. This side has two little lines, so does this side. This one has three little lines, so does this side. So we indicate that those, what we call corresponding sides, have the same length. So their corresponding sides are, the, are congruent, and the cor their corresponding angles are congruent because the sides have the same length. The corresponding sides, which means this side corresponds to this side, this side corresponds to this side, and this side corresponds to that side. And the same with the angles. This angle corresponds to this angle, that angle corresponds to this angle, and this angle corresponds to that angle. And we can then see that if their corresponding sides have the same length, then the sides are congruent. If their corresponding angles have the same measure, then they are congruent. So, we now take a look at these two figures. Now, they're not triangles, they're figures. They both have four angles and they have four sides. And how can we tell that these two shapes are congruent? Well, again, we need to find their corresponding sides and their corresponding angles. And if the corresponding sides have the same length and the corresponding angles have the same angular measure, then these two figures must be congruent. So here we have angle one. There we have angle one. They're both 90 degree angles. So they have the same angular measure. Here's angle two, and there's angle two. They are also right angles, 90 degree angles, so they, are, they have the same measure. Here's angle three. Here's angle three. Notice that they have the same little curve on them, curved little line, which means that these have the same angular measure. And same for angle number four with the two lines. That's an indication that they have the same angular measure. So you can see that all the angles have corresponding angles from one figure to the next, which have the same measure. Looking at the sides, here we have side A with a single line, here we have side A with a single line, so they have the same length. Here's side B with two lines, side B with two little lines through it, so here we can indicate that they have the same length. Side C, three little lines, three little lines, we can see that they have the same length, and side D, four little lines, four little lines, they have the same length. So all the sides have corresponding sides, so all the sides of one figure have corresponding sides on the other figure that have the same length, and all angles on this figure have corresponding angles over here with the same angular measure, and therefore the two figures must be congruent. So that's what we mean when we're looking for whether or not two triangles or two figures of any type are congruent to one another. You look for the length of each side, 
you look for the length or the angular measure of each angle and if you have corresponding uh, angles and sides on both figures then they are congruent.